Welcome to the debut of Sticker Shock. I am Jason Concepcion, your host today on Sticker Shock. We have four beautiful contestants. First, she is the co-host of this podcast. She is the co-owner of the WNBA Atlanta Dream. Please welcome two-time WNBA champion Renee Montgomery. Renee, how are you? What's up? What's up? I'm good, Jason. What's goody? Next, <laughs> she is a producer on this podcast, and she personally keeps all of Bravo's content afloat. She is Caroline Reston. Rest in peace, Caroline. How are you? Hey, every quote constantly just in my mind, ready to go. <laughs> uh, third, he is our guest today, co-founder of StockX and a trading card investor. Please welcome entrepreneur Josh Luber. Josh, Man, good morning. Sticker Shock sounds like the title of my relationship with my wife. <laughs> Don't believe me. And then finally, your fourth contestant, it is moi, the number one host in your hearts, at least, in the King of Knicks Nation. It is me. Here are the ground rules of Sticker Shock, folks. Our producer, Zuri. Zuri, say hello. Hey, good to be here. And I'm glad I'm not playing. I cannot lose this game. (laughs) Is going to tell us, Zuri is going to tell us about a collector's item that was recently sold on an online auction site. He will tell us the date. He will tell us the auction site. And we must guess the price without going over. Closest to the price gets a point. Everyone ready? Ready. Oh, God. Let's spin the wheel and see who goes first. Spin it. Spins. Bing, 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 bing. Okay. First up is Caroline, and here is our item. It is a 1990 Fleer All Stars Charles Barkley PSA 10. 1990 Fleer All Stars Charles Barkley card PSA 10. Caroline, how much did this. Uh, Zuri, tell us some more about this item. Well, yeah, you got it. It's a, um, this was listed as one of 104 on eBay. Uh, it's graded PSA 10. PSACard.com states that there were 61 sales of this card. And um, also in the 1990 set included Michael Jordan and Larry Bird. This sold on eBay in May of 2021. This sold May 9th, 2021. Hmm. Caroline, how much is this card? Okay, so Charles Barkley, it's from the 90s. It's vintage, which means it's probably worth a lot more. I'm going to say 120, no, no. I'm gonna say 227, wait, I can't do numbers. 227, wait, 227,000, what is that number? $227, $227. Caroline Rustin says two hundred. No, 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 no. She's saying two hundred twenty-two thousand. No, two hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Holy shit, that was a dream. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Christ, two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars says Caroline Rustin. Uh, Josh Luber, Josh Luber, how much is this card? All right, uh, this is uh, a card that ordinarily would be in the junk wax era. Uh, it, however, happens to be a PSA 10, uh, and there's high premiums on PSA 10, so I'm going to say this card is 80 bucks. $80. Oh Vast my gulf gosh. between those two guesses. Renee Montgomery. Renee, how much are you going to say this card is? 150 k Yes, Caroline. $1,000. $150,000. $150,000. I don't have a reason why <laughs> I Montgomery. feel like Charles Barkley... PSA 10, does it matter? I should be asking Josh, does it matter that he has a hit show and that his legacy is continuing on? I don't know, but I feel like that's got to be 150. Um, Now it goes to me. I This is not uh, Charles's rookie card, which I would imagine would be in the is somewhere in the four-figure uh, four range if it was a PSA 10, probably higher. I'm going to say, uh, Josh says 80. I'm going to say... I'm going to give it $55. Oh, uh, and- wow. He's he's still in Josh's thunder is what's happening. Well, as, at least you have to say 81, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not that type of person. Zuri, what's the price? Correct price is $143.50. Josh Luber, you are a winner with a guess of $80. Oh, come on. Congratulations, wow, Josh. This. Get in the there, Caroline, <laughs> quick if it's out there. Uh, Zuri, what's our next item? Our next item, a pair of Nike SB Low Staple NYC Pigeons, size nine. 
size 9. <laughs> These released February 22nd, 2005. Uh, they were sold on Stock X November 24th, 2020. And these are size nine shoes. Oh. Wow. Uh, let's so go. So I'm assuming uh, he's saying size nine because that's supposed to matter to us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go in reverse order. That goes to me. I'm going to say these sold on Stock X for uh, $89.99. Oh my gosh. Uh, next, Renee. Um, I'm gonna go for five hundred dollars, not K. Just five hundred dollars. I don't really. I need to do better. <laughs> I don't Joshua, know what that is. Joshua, what do you got? Well, this is an all-time classic to This kind of uh, is one of those one of those ones that that set the market for where it's at today. Caused riots in the streets of New York. Um, I'm gonna say it's thirty-five hundred dollars. Whoa. Oh. Holy shit. I might. Uh, <laughs> there's one more guesser, so I'll save the rest of my commentary, but $3,500. Caroline Rustin, rest in peace. Uh, what do you got? I'm alarmed that anything with a pigeon would be worth that much, but uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to say $2,500. $2,500, Zuri. What do you have? All right. Uh, Josh is right. These shoes did stir a riot upon release, and the correct price is $18,000. So what? our second round winner, Josh oh, Luber. <laughs> Josh Luber, two points. Everyone else, zero. Zuri, what's our next item? All right. Coming up next. This is rigged. <laughs> we, do have... <laughs> we do have an extra on the panel. Coming up next, a 1957 game worn jersey of Willie Mays. Now, this is oh. the 1957 season. This is the last season the Giants played in New York before moving to San Francisco in 1958. Willie Mays uh, led the league in steals, slugging percentage, and triples in 1957. Where did it sell from? They sold from Leland's Auction in 2017. Leland's Auction. Um, okay. Uh, Caroline, what do you got? Holy shit, I have no idea. Um, okay, <laughs> I am going to say an insane number. $1.2 million. Oh my gosh, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, $1.2 million. It Josh just Luber. seems like if anything were a million dollars, it would be this. Josh Luber, what do you got? What do you think? Willie Mays, 1957, Giants jersey, last year, the Giants in New York. The Giants won the pennant. The Giants won the pennant. So uh, somehow as a kid, I collected Willie Mays cards. I um, I don't know how as a kid I, I, I cared about Willie Mays as a 12 year old kid um, in 1990, but I didn't collect jerseys. However, I gotta say a, a jersey sign like this, not rookie year, three grand. Oh, $3,000. <laughs> Josh Luber. Renee? Well, I just want to say one thing real quick. Caroline, I've realized that the things that look like they would be the most and have the thing like they have the most in them, even these trading cards, it's like the things that would be the most are not the most. So thank you, Josh, for a hint because I know he's somewhere around there. Um, I'm going to go with 21,000. My number is 21. So let's go 21K. 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 Renee Montgomery. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say Willie Mays, obviously a classic, one of, a, a legendary player, pioneering player. It's the last year of the Giants in New York. I am going to say $8,500. $8,500. Zuri, what's the price? The correct price is $222,036. We have a new yes. winner, round three, Renee Montgomery. Yes, let's go! Wow. Score is two to one. Josh Luber, fourth and final round coming. Zuri, what's the item? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> the item we're looking at now is the last violin played on the Titanic. <laughs> this sold at Henry Aldridge and Son in I 2013. I would pay $100 million for this. We have an early guess from Caroline. Um, uh, no, I thought my guess. <laughs> Uh, this sold in 2013, and apparently this was strapped to the back of English musician Wallace Hartley as the Titanic sank. And um, the violin was given as a, as a gift to his fiance as an engagement gift. Um, From who? Wow. And it's was believed it, to be German and created around 1880. Um, did did one, he the, survive? He did not survive. This is going to make me cry. <laughs> so this is let me beautiful. Get this. Let me, 
could he not get on the door with Rose? What was the issue? <laughs> well, I think he's just a musician's musician and wanted to die with his item. And again, this sold in 2013 at the Henry Aldrich and Son auction. Okay, and was he a wow. part of the like string quartet who sent, who played as the Titanic is, went down? Correct. That is the uh, the assumption. I have okay, a fun fact uh, about that. I'll save it for another time. Okay, so uh, the Titanic uh, violin. Gosh, it's a historical item. It looks like they also have like a life vest or something from from the uh, from the Titanic in the background of it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh my! Eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars for me. Next, Renee. Oh my goodness, let's go. I mean, let me just stop at a milli. I just feel like if someone, milli. Didn't, if someone didn't pay a million dollars for this, they got it for a steal. This is like crazy. A historical item of, of great value, Josh Luber, uh, violins. T Titanic, ever heard of it? Uh, what is your guess? Slightly outside my area of expertise, <laughs> but I'm gonna say this is here because it's some crazy number. So let's say $10 million. Oh my gosh. $10 million. Josh. What kind Huber? of sneakers were they wearing on the Titanic? Josh, yeah. like what they was what? rocking on the Titanic? I got no idea. This thing, this watch just ends up being like 400 bucks. I don't know. <laughs> Caroline, <laughs> uh, your guess. Okay, ordinarily anything that has to do with the Titanic actually is my area of expertise. Very few of them, but that is one of them. But for this, I'm going to guess $4 million. Four million dollars, says Caroline. Who will be near, far, closest to the price of the Titanic <laughs> violin? Zuri, tell us. All right, correct price, $1.7 million, which means Renee Montgomery yes! is all around for a winner, which means we have a tie. <laughs> Let's go! Oh! <laughs> Don't so call we a go. Comeback. You know what I've this been means? Here for years. You know what this means? That means. Renee and Josh, you will now square mm. off in our tiebreaker round with one final item to decide the winner. Zuri, what is that item? All right. I'm scared. Uh, oh. Final item is a 1999 Pokemon PSA 10 base set first edition Charizard. And the Charizard maintains the highest hit points and an attack more powerful than any other card in the inaugural set. Um, the imagery is courtesy of Matsuhiro Arita, and this is one of 120 Charizard PSA 10s. And where did it sell? Oh my God. And this item sold at Iconic Auctions in October 2020. Uh, uh, Renee, your guess. The PSA oh 10 Charizard, gosh. Pokemon Charizard. Okay, so I think I remember one of the Logan brothers even getting this tattoo of this Pokemon on him. He had like a suitcase full of money flying on a private jet to go get this card. I really think it's something like that. So, oh, I'm just going to go with five. Uh, who's, what are they paying for this? Let's go with 1.5 million. 1.5 million for the 1999 PSA 10 Pokemon Charizard. Josh Luer, for all the marbles, what is your guess? So remind me, uh, you is it closest without going over? Closest without going over. One dollar. <laughs> oh my god! Here's the thing. All right. So real quick, this card uh, is about I want to say a six hundred thousand dollar card today um, in a PSA ten, uh, but um, I think it has never reached one point five million. So I'm just gonna take the W. Oh, not worry about it. going over. <laughs> Zuri, what is the answer? This card sold for $183,812, uh, which means Josh Luber, you are our winner. Oh Josh Luber, congratulations. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? Your victory speech, sir. Hey, sometimes you just got to take the W. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, thanks a lot.